Hi, I'm Randy Johnson. I recently authored an article called Create Multi-Level Projects on a CNC. It's a summertime welcome sign, and it appears in the July 2021 issue of Wood Magazine. The article covers the basic steps of how I designed and machined the project, as well as some clamping and finishing tips and techniques. In this video, I will go into more detail on how I use the VCARF software to create the drawing and the toolpaths for the sign. You can use these VCARF techniques to create similar projects and designs, or if you're new to CNC, these techniques are good ones to add to your list of VCARF skills. As with any CNC project, there are several steps involved. First of all, setting up the VCAR file, creating the vectors, maybe use, using some artwork as we will in this case, creating the tool paths, as well as the doing the machining, the finishing of the project. Setting up the file, of course, is the first thing, and I've started this file already, so I'm gonna open it up from the recently opened file list. And just to show how I set it up, I started with a single-sided setup, 24 by 18 piece of MDF is what I'm using for this project. I zeroed the Z to the top of the material, as well as put the XY data to the lower left. I'm gonna use some artwork for this project for the truck, and I need to go into the folder at the upper right up here for importing bitmaps. The artwork that I'm using, I found out at iStack Photo. It was a nice old pickup truck, so I purchased the file, and that's what I will use to create this project. Lots of times, bitmaps will import fairly small, but they're easily scaled by using the set tool at the left, making sure that the box is checked by the link XY. Since my material is 24 inches wide, I'm gonna set it at 22 for the final size of the truck and it will scale proportionally, like I said, because I've got the link XY check. When it looks good, you can click apply, that automatically enlarges your bitmap to fit the size. You can close out of this window. And next I wanna set up some layers for this, which I've already done by clicking on the layers tab, we can look at these. I'm gonna be drawing some vectors on a wheels layer, a fenders layer, and a body layer. And then I also have a layer called layout for cutting, which all of the vectors will end up there. And I'll use that layer for my tool paths. But it's often easier to create separate layers for the different parts of a project because you could end up with a lot of lines otherwise that are hard to get around. First thing I'm gonna do is click on the wheels layer so it turns bold. This makes it active, which means that all the future lines or vectors that I draw will end up on the wheels layer. Now that I'm done in the layers menu, I can click on the drawing tab and I need to draw the wheels. So I'm gonna use the circle tool. Drawing out from the middle of the tire, I'm gonna draw a circle out and click on it. It will then create a circle there, which I can then also edit by clicking up in the diameter box and entering a diameter for this one, 3.8, which fits the tire just nice. I can click apply. I also want to add some details for the white wall on this. So I'm going to go down to the offset tool, the lower left. And I'm using an inward, of course, because I want to go inward with the line. A third of an inch I found works well. I'm also going to select the new line because I want to collect, create a second offset as well. So first I click offset, which creates the first circle around the white wall, and then I click offset again, and it clicks and it creates the next offset. I'm now done with my offset tool, so I can close out of that window. Inside my main window now, I'm gonna draw a rectangle around the wheels to select all of those vectors. And then after they're selected, I'm gonna left or rather right click and bring up the local menu and click on copy. This will copy the vectors. I can then click on paste to paste the vectors. And then I'm gonna drag the new set over to the right side. So they're on the right side for that set of wheels. So now I have an identical set of vectors for both wheels. Having done that, I need to go back up into my layers menu and I'm going to 
uncheck the light bulb by the wheels because I want those to be hidden. And I'm gonna turn on the fenders layer and highlight it because the next lines or vectors that I draw, I want to appear on the fenders layer. To start with my fenders, I'm gonna use the Create Line tool, click on that tool and open up the menu for that. I'm now gonna click several spots around the fenders to create a rough outline. Personally, I like to use the Create Line tool and I'll go back later and smooth these. At the top here, also notice that I've checked, turned off all my snaps. It just makes it easier to click around on shapes when the snap is not activated. However, the last thing I need to do is connect the lines. And for that, I do wanna activate one of the snaps so that when I get back to the beginning and click on that beginning point, it will join those vectors together. So I'll have one continuous vector, which is important. I'm done with my create line tool so I can close out of that window. Next, I wanna select that and then right click and brings up my local menu. And I'm gonna go down to where it says node edit mode, which is also the end key on the keyboard because now I'm gonna edit these various nodes and they all appear and you can see all the black dots. These are the corners of all those lines, the ends of all those lines. But I'm gonna go into each one of those or most of those now and by holding my mouse over the cursor over it, it turns into a little square crosshairs. And then I right click on that. And when I right click, it brings up the local menu again, and I can click on smooth point, which is also the S key on the keyboard for a shortcut. When I click on that, it then smooths that point, And I'll continue doing that all around most of the fender until they're all smooth. I've left a couple of them along the front and along the bottom here straight because I want those straight. So the next thing I need to do is go in and maneuver these bezier curves like this one right here. I'll need to move it down by the fender. I need to move this handle up so this and this handle down so it follows the fender. And as I continue moving the bezier curves and the handles around, control handles and right here I can even select right here and move the whole thing in. I now have the vector following the outside of my fender quite nicely. I'll then continue that until the fender both the front and the back are all nicely smoothed and fit the shape of my drawing. I'm going to go back up to my layers menu and I'm gonna turn back on the wheels layer and the fenders layer, both those are turned on. So I see the vectors for both of those. Next, I'm going to copy all of those vectors for both the wheels and the fenders. And I'm going to right click again. And this time I'm going to copy those to the body layer. I need to make use of those when I create the body layer, you see, how that is as I do that in the next few steps. But I'm gonna copy over both the fender and the tires to the body layer. And then I'm going back up to the top. And as you can see there, I've turned off the wheel layer and the body or the fender layer, just leaving the body layer active so that the new lines I draw uh, will appear on the body layer. I don't need the circles that represent the white wall. So I'm gonna select those, right click and delete those. The first work that I'm gonna do on the body layers, I'm gonna add the front bump bumper using the draw rectangle tool. Now notice how I've pulled the bumper back into the fender a little bit, cause I'm gonna go back later and trim out all this area. So I have one continuous line on the outside. I've done the same in the back. I've drawn a rectangle, brought it inside the fender. The last thing I'm gonna do for the body drawing is I'm gonna add a line starting a little tail here inside the fender up over the top of the hood and the roof and the box of it and down over the tailgate back to the fender. 
Once that is completed, I can get my, my the trim tool to clean up this drawing. And the first thing I'm gonna clean up with the trim tool is I'm gonna cut out the inside of the wheel well, the fender right here, because my wheel shape is gonna fit into my body shape. You'll see how that is when we get to the cutout part of it. But I'm also going to go inside the fender and trim out that area. And then I'm gonna trim out the tails right up at the top up here. And then in the back, I've trimmed out the fender or rather the bumper in the back. And then the last thing I need to do is get rid of this top line of the fender. I don't need that either. So I'm gonna trim that as well. Now I'll switch back into the node edit. You can see here after I did the trimming that I've got one continuous vector now going all the way around the truck. I still need to round off the top of the roof as well as the front of the hood. So I've routed those off. I've also gone in and added the window and with little round corners in it. I've also shortened up the bottom edge of the body vector here because I want the body to be hidden behind this bottom part of the fender as well as a little clearance here. And most importantly up here where the radiator is, that way when I put the fender part on top of the body part, the fender will stick over the front of the truck, much like a real vehicle would, and add a little bit to the three-dimensional look of it. I can now go back in and turn off my bitmap layer, as well as my wheels layer, leaving that off. And I've got my fenders and my body layer highlighted now with all the other, the top two layers both turned off. You'll notice how the layer for cutting has nothing in it, and that's because there's nothing on that layer right now, so I can ignore it. But I do want both the fender and the body layer visible, and I want the body layer highlighted right now, so it's active. I'm gonna go in and open up the text tool in the left corner over here, clicking on that, and then enter the welcome text along the side of the truck body. I've used a left alignment, which aligns with that little left or little green node that you see right there. I'm also making it bold, about an inch tall. I found out works well for this truck and everything looks good. So I can close out of that. I can then go up and turn off my body layer. So the body and the text disappear, leaving just the fender layer. And I wanna make sure to activate that because now I'm gonna add the stars to the fender and I want the stars to be part of the fender layer. So the first thing I need to do is to use my create line tool again, and I'm gonna draw a rough line around the middle of that fender, and then use the uh, smooth tools and the bezier curves and the handles to smooth that out till I get a nice flow that goes all the way along the fender, the middle area of it. Next, I wanna bring up my star tool to create the stars that are gonna go along this. All I need to do first off is just create a single star and make sure that it fits along the running board, which is the narrowest part of the area. So I'll fit that star to that area and I can close out of my star tool. And then I'm gonna move this star off the running board and back into the open area right here. I'm now going to get my copy along vector tool at the bottom over here, open up that window. The first thing you need to do when you want to copy an object along a line is to select the object first, which in this case is the star, and then second, select the line. To get them both selected, an easy way to do that is click on the star, hold the shift key down, and then click on the line. And that way they'll both be selected and they'll be and the program will remember what order you selected them in. I already know that I need about 19 stars to go along the length of this curve. So I'm gonna type in the 19 and then simply hit copy and it'll instantaneously place the stars along that curve. I can now close out of this window and zoom in. I don't need the stars or the single star or that vector line. So I could select those, use the right click, and go in and delete those or use the delete key on my keypad. 
I noticed after I created those stars that some of them seemed to be, they were touching along the top here. The ones at the two ends of the fenders were a little bit close. So I went back in and moved the stars and just realigned them a little bit to give them a little bit more uh, flow along the fender area. Now I'm going back in and turning on all my layers that have my vectors on it, the wheels, the fenders, and the body. I've activated all of those. And then selecting all of those vectors, I then right click, go to the copy to layer and down to the, to the layout for cutting. So I wanna copy all my original vectors over to this layer called layout for cutting. But I click on that, it'll copy them over and you'll notice on your drawing that you'll see some pink lines overlaying some black lines. And that's because you have duplicate vectors on top of each other. But in this drawing, I can solve that by opening up the layers menu and turning off the visibility of the wheel, fender and body layers. So those vectors are all hidden down. All that I'm left with are the vectors on my layout for cutting layer. I'm now going to reposition the parts, starting but with the tires, moving those up to the upper right. And then I'll take the fender and the stars and move those down towards the bottom to position stuff for cutting. Whatever you're maneuvering things like this, uh, if, it, if they're too close after you run your tool path in the preview, you can always go back and readjust them. But right now, this will work as a good starting point. The next step along the way is to go to the toolpath window and look at the toolpaths. I've already set up all the toolpaths for this project, but I'm going to take a look at each one of them so you can see how I set them up and, and the order that they occur here and why that's important. The first one is the bevel edge, and that's this little edge that goes all the way around all the parts to give it a little bit more of a 3D profile and soften the edge a little bit. For that, I used a 60 degree V bit cutting to a depth of a quarter inch. So that bevel goes a quarter inch through the material and then I'm going right on the line. <clears throat> the way I was able to get a beveled edge is that I'll go back later with the straight bit in the next step and I'll cut to the outside of that line. So it'll actually just cut half of that V groove away, leaving the V part or the beveled edge on the project itself. So for the cutout, I'm starting by cutting it using the tool path set up just for the fenders and for the body. I'm cutting 0.76 deep, just a little over the thickness of the material to make sure I cut all the way through. I'm using a quarter inch up spiral straight bit. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna cut around the outside. And you can even see in the preview here that that bevel is still remaining on the inside edge around the body part, as well as the fender part. It's important to add a little bit of ramp to the straight bit so it eases it down into the cut. And I've also added the tabs, which appear in the cutout as well as over here in the 2D drawing where you see the little yellow T's. Everything looks good there. So next I can go on to my tire cutouts. And the tire cutouts use all the same settings as I used for the body of the fenders with one exception. I've added an allowance offset of a negative 0.005. It's a very small amount, but cumulatively together, it'll add up to being making this part about 10,000 smaller than the opening in the fender well or in the wheel well of the truck. I wanna make it just a little bit smaller so it fits nice and easy. After that, I took the three parts off the table, the four parts rather, and I spray painted each of them individually. And then I went back to the machine and remounted the parts to do the final V carving that you can see here in the photo. I used some dowels for that in the quarter inch kerf. Some of the dowels I had to sand a little bit. A couple of them I had to put a little bit of tape on to make sure they fit snug. Uh, but they held well and they did a fine job of holding it in place. For the window uh, and the white walls, I used a 0.1 depth of cut on that for a flat bottom. But for the welcome text and the stars, I used V-carving to the full depth. Once that was done, I took the parts back off and used some white paint and rubbed into those areas where the raw material was, painted it in there, and then just used a wet rag to rub it off the top. 
So I hope you found some helpful information there and enjoyed that. You can certainly apply these techniques to other projects as well. Thank you for joining us today.